Do you have some folding chairs that are ripped and are in need of a facelift? Watch today's video and we'll show you how to give them a transformation. The first step is to remove the seat and back from your chair. So yours might look a little different, but just look for the screws and remove those. And save these in a little tub. We have changed out some of them. Uh, they don't seem to be grabbing, so you might have to change out uh, your screws so that you get a nice uh, solid connection. But just remove that. And set these screws aside as well. First step is to take the old fabric off. They make special upholstery tools for this, but if you just had a flat bladed screwdriver and just go under the staples and pop those off, when possible, if your fabric is intact, try not to rip it because it'll. Um, most of the times it is easier to use that fabric as a template to cut out the replacement fabric. So we're going to set that aside for that pattern and do the same and take these staples out. Okay, I have these staples removed. And again, if you can save the fabric, but on this one it's not quite as necessary because you're going to be wrapping the fabric around this and uh, you can and it's a perfect square. If it was odd shaped, then we need to use it as a template. But you can take that off. And we do the same for this. This is a really, on this uh, chair, is a really flimsy piece of uh, particle cardboard or something under here. So the staples come out quite easy. This one, you do want to try to save this piece because it is an odd shape. Next step is to cut out your fabric. We just picked a vinyl fabric that I actually got this from Walmart. Um, so you're going to have to calculate the amount. Most vinyl fabric will come in about 54 inch width. So if you take the measurement of your chair seat, which is, would be your biggest piece, you need to do that measurement, plus you need to put two inches minimum on each side. So if this seat, this seat here is measuring 15, we would need to have a minimum of say a 20 inch by 20 inch square to cover this seat. So that'll help you calculate your amount of fabric. So I have my fabric turned over. I could also use this as a template. So I could lay this down and use it as a template. It is so brittle and dirty. Um, if it if you have a uniform piece, it's, this is just as easy. So lay your seat down, take a ruler, and make sure that you have, it. we're gonna go three inches on each side. And just going to cut, the cool thing about upholstering is um, it's not like a dress pattern where it's all precise. So we're just gonna cut a rough square around this that is three inches bigger. Since the back piece is unique, if you can straighten out this fabric, use it as a pattern. If you can't, go ahead and just lay this down and do the same thing with a marker. Draw a piece that is at least two inches bigger all the way around. Okay, I want to add foam to this. This is super, super thin. So I'm gonna leave that foam on and just put a layer on top of it. This is a half inch piece of foam that I had left over from another project. This is a quarter inch foam that I actually purchased for this uh, project, uh, but I did find more chairs in the shed. So I'm gonna be using up all of the foam that I have. These are sold um, in bags at Walmart as well. So for the foam, if it's nice and thin, cut it big enough to come and wrap over. It won't wrap over this half inch stuff. So I'm going to cut it exactly the size of the seat. When you are doing your fabric, you need to make sure you're cutting your fabric if you're increasing the size of the foam like I am, that your fabric is big enough to go over the edge with the added dimension of your foam. 
Okay, I need to test to make sure that there's enough fabric here. So I am going to just lay this on top of there. You could do um, an adhesive spray, but there's um, it's so tight once we get around and it's a small object, I think you'll be just fine laying it on top. But testing, we it looks like we have enough fabric to go all the way around and we should be good. For this chair back, I am going to go ahead and add a little bit of foam to it as well. But this is the quarter inch foam, so I'm going to cut it to where it will wrap around the edges. So we need to cut this to be at least, I'd say, an inch and a half bigger than our uh, back. The last piece that you need to cut out, for this style at least, is the piece that hides uh, the bottom staples. The chair I'm going to do next doesn't have that piece, so you might not. But we have this template. Turn my fabric over. This is just some black that I had left over from another project. And I'm just going to use this as a template to cut out the, the base piece. If you didn't have a good template, you can just simply use this to draw around uh, to get your base piece. Okay, when possible, there are screw holes that we need to, when we reassemble this, you're going to want to know where those are. So I'm laying the template over the top of this and just going to use a marker that is visible so that we can find the screw holes when we're done. Next step is reassembly. You're going to need to have a pretty uh, good electric staple gun. We just ordered this one off of Amazon. Super uh, impressed with it. It's working well. You're going to need to have quarter inch staples for the back because your staples any longer than that would poke through this really thin uh, material and you're going to need to have at least 5 16 or half inch staples for your base. When you're upholstering a seat or pretty much anything you go opposite edges alternating back and forth. So if you staple here, then you staple here. If you staple here, then back and forth. Even on the sides, when you staple, go to the opposite side, turning it over often to make sure you don't have any puckers. So on the seat, I'm going to be using the 5 16th uh, staples and um, I do have this adjusted to be, this wood is really hard and dry, so I have it adjusted to be a little bit uh, more powerful. So put in your first, put pressure down. Always have a hammer uh, handy. This one, it's in, but it's raised a little bit. Just tap it the rest of the way in. So we put one there. And so now I need to pull tight and put one here. Okay, now I have each of the quadrants taken care of. I'm going to start honing in on one corner at a time. So same idea, if I go on this side of the um, staple, then I go on this side. So back and forth, always alternating.
here's the screw holes that I was referring to earlier. So just as a second thing, I'm going to put a mark above those screw holes in case my fabric doesn't line up. This is just a, a second way to find it. Okay, so now I'm just going to go around and tighten up where there's gaps. So same thing though, I'm going to put one here, I put one here. Ah, it's looking pretty good. Okay, so on the corners, there's a lot of bulk here. So I'm going to slit just down a little bit, not to the edge, just slit down a little bit and cut out a piece of triangle here and there. So just slitting down. Now that leaves room for this piece and this piece to staple down and make that nice and smooth. Okay, the first corner done. So we're just going to continue and uh, I haven't finished cutting that one. So cut these and uh, lay down the corners. We're ready now for the uh, base piece. Some of it still has a little bit of gaps um, between my staples. You can go ahead and staple those ahead of time, your choice. Or this is going to be going over it and stapling all the way around. So if you don't have one of these pieces, you need to make sure there's a staple about every good inch all the way around. The metal frame will be going around this exterior. So we need to staple along the, the edge pretty close. To do the back, it is uh, just as similar as the seat, but this challenge is getting the staples to attach to this. So I'm guessing that most of yours would be similar because this is really thin. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull and try to staple into the center as much as possible. I've switched to a quarter inch staples. And so we'll just do trial and error back and forth. So we've done that side and we pull it nice and tight and this side and that one didn't quite go in this wood it just doesn't have much to grip to the edges are more deteriorated than the center so we're trying to staple in the center but this is going to turn out pretty good so we've done those now we'll do the end Do the opposite end. And this one is going to be tricky. This wood is really a tough. Oh, that seems to hold. So now I'm going to make a, a dart on the corners to get this excess uh, batting out of the way. So just cut a V on the corner so that your batting can lay down and pull up your fabric. Okay, the staples just popped out of this bad area, so I'm going to trim down the uh, new foam to make it maybe a little less bulk. See if I can stretch the fabric to get something to staple to. Hey, we uh, won that battle and it looks like we're about ready to win the war. So I'm going to continue the same idea. There's quite a bit of fabric here, so I'm going to just notch out a triangle. Be careful not to go down to the edge of your upholstery. So just going to notch out to reduce bulk. Looking pretty good. So there is not a fabric back that goes on this. This goes directly onto the metal. So you need to have a continuous uh, bead of staples all the way around this one because there's no staples going to be going on it. 
Okay, this one's ready to go back on the chair, um, and Ross is gonna take care of that and show us how to do that. Well, there you have it. The chairs are done and they look great. If you have any questions on your process, please comment down below and we'll get back to you. But as always, thank you for watching DIY on the House.